Every day in the USA, people find themselves in court. And next one is Jacob Strong. Strong? Strong, yes. Jacob. We are on the record, or we will be when he shows up. Hello, sir. We are on the record in 2024 TR 1676, State of Kansas versus Jacob Dasman Strong, Jared Regeer for the state, Mr. Strong appearing in person and pro se. Mr. Strong is here today, sir, not for first appearance. I, you've been here. If I may interject, ma'am, I believe. Not yet, or please. Okay. Hold, hold off. July 3rd of 2024, you were here. You were here August 20, no, you were here August, July 3rd. Was, and then you called for your next court date. So now you can interject, please. Sorry about that, ma'am. I was just taking notes. Um, if I may interject, I believe I've had one appearance with you on Zoom that was, I believe, was very successful. The second one was, I believe, the 26th, which was Monday, about a day or two ago. And we didn't really get to quite discuss where things are in the process of this because there was a case that I was not aware of. And I believe you were not aware of from the first time. And I did go ahead and get that took care, uh, took care of yesterday when I had tried to call or ask or communicate with you what the case was, where the ticket resided, what the warrant was. I ended up finding it and I ended up turning myself in on my own accordances to lift those warrants and to lift all of those matters as far as it goes with Chautauqua and with you guys. Um, I have all of my paperwork in regards to my bonds. And uh, right now, what I was trying to explain that other time I have paid all of my tickets. I am right now just waiting for the courts to send a piece of paper over so that way I can have it processed to go to the DMV or the driver's revenue, whichever route they may be, so that way I can present a license to you. And I believe that was the agreement that I had tried to actually speak with you about from the first appearance before all of this took place. Yeah, you were trying to make an agreement with me and I don't generally make agreements. That's usually the prosecutor that negotiates pleas, but uh, Destiny, could you check the docket note and see if that says the 27th and it should have said the 26th? Seems like that happened on Monday. It did. And this yes, is Judge, it was Monday's hearing. Okay, so if you could fix that date in my notes. All right, so, and you said you freely turned yourself in and that is good because you did have an active board on, I believe this case. But let's go through and get, let's get a, an inventory of what you do have going on here in Butler. Thank you for appearing in person as I told you to do. All right, so Destiny, Mr. Regeer, let's see, I, I, we've, added, we've added one case today for Mr. Strong, or maybe it was already here. And that is this 24TR1676 that we had on Monday. But then don't we have the other one pending too that he referenced? Your Honor, the state's understanding is there is another Butler County case involving the same defendant, 23TR-300061. It would appear that there was a prior failure to appear back in July. However, I am showing an appearance bond recently executed in that matter for a hearing date in November. It, Specifically, November 27th, there does appear to be a 2,500 professional surety bond. And is that the one he just, did he just do that one yesterday or today? The bond, that, the bond that I'm showing in that case appears to have an execution date of August 26th, two days ago. Similarly, in the current case, 24TR 1676, which is actually on the docket today, I am showing... 
uh, uh, prior appearance bond in that case for April 21st. That was executed back in April 21st for an appearance date in July. All right. So as he said, he, he promptly took care of the warrant in this one. Uh, let's take up both of those either today or both of them in November. I would love to take up both of them, please, to put them behind me. You want to take them both up today? Yes. Um, are you wanting an attorney to represent you in either of these cases? Um, I don't know if that is what I should do. What I was hoping if I am allowed to without overstepping my boundaries. Um, if I could have one continuance to come back with a license and proof of a vindiction interlock. Now that the license is actually going to be free, I believe this week or the next, because the cases I had holding up my uh, license, causing it to be suspended, uh, I have zeroed all of those balances and I do have those receipts on my phone. Uh, I can email them to whatever court or DA that needs them to show that I am taking the proper steps to get back on that track of getting my license and going the proper way of getting the interlock because driving is not a right, it is a privilege. And I would like to be able to atone for that matter and show that I am better than who I was before. Mr. Strong, it's up to you whether you have an attorney represent you in either or both of these cases as we are on the record in both 24 TR 1676 and 23 TR 300061. Uh, you can either hire an attorney or you can apply for court appointed or you can waive your right and represent yourself. So how would you like to proceed on the issue of attorney? I'll represent myself. No, I'm, I'm talking to Mr. Strong. Was that Mr. Strong that answered? No, sorry, it cut out. Okay, Mr. Coffey, it's not quite your hearing yet. Okay. Thank you, sir. So, Mr. Strong, do you wish to have an attorney? I'll represent myself. All right, Deputy, if you have him wa sign a waiver for each of those case numbers... And is anyone making you waive your right to counsel, Mr. Strong? No, ma'am. You understand you do have the right to apply for court appointed if you cannot afford to hire an attorney? Yes. Okay. And I will have the record reflect that you are knowingly and voluntarily waiving your right to counsel. Again, on the record in both oral and written fashion. And Mr. Regeer, do you have that case available as well, that extra case? I do, Your Honor. Um, the For the these matters proceeding any further, again, while um, it is the state's understanding that the 23 case was not set on today's docket and the court is um, taking a somewhat unusual approach procedurally in taking it up, if the court is prepared to proceed on both at this time, the state would request clarification as to whether the defendant has successfully waived his right to counsel on the record in both cases. Deputy, he signed a waiver in both cases, correct? Yes, he's, uh, I put both case numbers on there and he signed it. All right, they'll need to be filed in both cases, Destiny. The waiver will. And then, um, or Destiny, would you rather he filled out two separate forms? No, one form is fine, Judge, and I can put it in both cases. Okay, thank you. And then we can take that one off the November date. Mr. Regeer and Destiny. And looking first at the 2023 TR300061. Looks like this was this was uh, first appearance, sir, in this case. You're charged with count one speeding, 68 and a 55. This is a traffic infraction. It does not carry jail time. 
but it is a scheduled fine. Then in count three, the ignition interlock operating without the required ignition interlock device following a DUI is a class A misdemeanor. If convicted, your fine could be up to $2,500. Your sentence could be up to a year in the county jail. The uh, date of this these offenses is alleged to have been October 13th, 2023 in Butler County. And then in the other case, the 24 TR1676, this is the one that we were here on Monday about. And we did set this over. You did tell me July 3rd, you were going to hire an attorney or apply for court appointed. Then today you're telling me and are waiving your right to counsel. Now, how do you want to proceed on this case? This uh, newer case is also ignition interlock and unsafe turning class A misdemeanor and the infraction with a fine only. Um, if I may, uh, could I proceed further if allowed to a continuance so I can come back and present the license in an interlock? All right. I will set this over to a Wednesday. And what date is that? November 20th, Your Honor. Okay, be back here in person November 20th at 9 a.m. And if, since you're representing yourself and you're wanting to negotiate, and I don't negotiate these things, you'll need to contact the county attorney. And it appears that Jared Regeer is the prosecutor on these cases. Now, whether he will negotiate with you, talk to you, that's between you and him. But that's where I'm going to leave it at this time, sir. You'll be, if you're not on bond in both of these, and I think you are, I think you had warrants and you were, you turned yourself in. So you signed a bond in both these cases, sir, or not? Uh, yes, ma'am. I have the paperwork right in front of me. I can print it off, leave copies with whoever. Just show what it to happened. the deputy and he'll be satisfied if, if they're legitimate. And also he took care of a Chautauqua County warrant also. Yes. Very, oh, very good. Very good. I had I, I had no no knowledge of these things. I believe when I had spoke with the clerk, they had said something about his system had crashed. I don't know. However, I was not going to allow there to be any excuses or any holes for leaks. And I do not believe in stepping in places or putting my foot where I can't see, basically. And so that is why I went ahead and did that. When I got to the jail, I did not know that I had that second warrant. I went there on the first one because naturally, when I had spoke with you and asked these questions, I didn't really get much from you. So I took it upon myself to search it out. And Well, when it comes to warrants, the law is kind of picky about how you release information about warrants. So that may be why you got some uncertainty and unclarity from different agencies. Like you guys say, honesty is the best policy, right? Well, I don't know who you reference to, but. Mm -hmm. uh, Judge, I, I was told earlier by my control that his, everything was taken care of with him. Okay, well, it sounds like it is. So I'm going to uh, release you at this time on your bonds and make sure you comply with them and be back here November 20th at 9 a.m. Yes, ma'am. All right, you may go, sir, unless Mr. Regeer has anything further. Your Honor, if the court is setting both these cases to a November 20th day, and I believe the court had made certain orders concerning the defendant appearing in person at the next hearing, um, is that at the Sally Port? At the courthouse, and then wherever the courthouse security designates it. Very good, Your Honor. All right. Thank yep. you. We'll be back here. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, you thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. And I hope you have a good day. Thank you. I hope you do as well. Mr. Regeer, I will be in touch with you, and I hope you have a good day as well. 